right, let's work another example here. Let's do a quadratic. So we've got 8 sine x squared is going to be equal to 5 sine x plus 2. So it's a quadratic, and the first thing I want to do is get all my terms on one side. So I will subtract 5 sine x, simultaneously subtract negative 2. So I end up with 8 sine x squared minus 5 sine x minus 2 equals 0. So this looks exactly like an algebra equation, 8x squared minus 5x minus 2. All we did is substitute x for sine x, so you can see it looks just like an algebra equation that you have solved with the quadratic formula in a previous course. So to identify, um, to use the quadratic formula, formula, you have to identify the a, the b, and the c. And those will, those coefficients and integers we can use in our quadratic formula. Um, you can do it by hand with the quadratic formula on paper. I'm going to use my quadratic program that I have on the calculator. If you don't have it on your calculator, see me in class and I can put that on your calculator. Um, so when I do that and I run it through my calculator, I end up with x equals 0 0.9021 and it's quadratic. I'm going to get two solutions. The other one is negative 0.2771. Well, we solved for x, but really we've got sine x. So I could just say that this is really sine x, and this is really sine x. So we have to take that a step further. So let's take this first one up here. So we know that sine x is 0.9021. Let's do this problem in radians again. So set to radians, I'm going to turn this into an arc sine uh, using my inverse notation. And then when you put that in your calculator, you end up getting x equals 1.1246. And um, hold that, we're going to come back to that and do something with, all, with that in a minute to find the other one, but I'm going to do it on a separate piece of paper. Just hold tight with that one. Let's take the second one here. So we have sine x equals negative 0.2771. Changing that into an inverse notation, we get x equals arc sine of negative 0.2771. And then when I put that in my calculator, I get negative 0.2871. So again, hold tight with that one in your notes. These are not our final answers yet. Let me open up a new page. So let's first start by drawing the circle. And this is in radians, so let me divide the quadrants. 0 and pi is 3.14. Pi over 2 is 1.57 approximately. 3 pi over 2 is 4.7, and again, 2 pi is 6.28. All right, so the first one that we got, first solution, was 1.1246. So we're, we're in radian mode again. So 1.1246, that's going to be in quadrant 1. I'm just going to say it's, I'm just going to say it's right here. It doesn't really matter where I put it. So that means this arc length here is 1.1246. We'll call that solution number one. And there's solution number one and also shown on uh, the circle. So you recall that you've got some symmetry going on over here. So there's another point over here. We will call that solution number two. It has the same y value, um, which is the sine and the arc length in this direction is the same. So to find point number two, you're going to take pi and you're going to 
subtract 1.1246. And when you do that, you get 2.017. So that's our second solution. So see, I'm going to do that in, in, I'll do that in this um, blue color here. So that arc length right all the way over to there is your 2.017. All right, now we had a third one. And the third one from the front page, the other page, x equals negative 0.2808. Alright, so the negative direction, that puts me down here. So I'm just going to say I'm right here. And this arc length here is 0 0.2808, but of course it's in the negative direction. Well that, I can't display that as one of my solutions, because remember, um, my restriction here, I'll put it down here, I have to have it between 0 and 2 pi, which means I have to get to it in the positive direction. So to get to this point right here in the positive direction, we'll call that number 3, we're going to take 2 pi, because it's 2 pi all the way around, and then subtract 0 0.2808. And when you do that, you get 6.00. So that's our third solution, and let me identify that, and um, here I'll use this neon green a minute. So the neon green, so that arc length all the way around here, oops, that gets us to that third point right there. Alright, and then we've got some symmetry with that. So over here in this quadrant is your fourth point. So if Right here. If this arc length right here, like we just said, was 0 0.2808, the length of it in the negative direction, of course, then this arc length is the same. So this arc length is also 0 0.2808. So to do number four, you're going to take pi and you're going to add 0 0.2808. And when you do that, you get 3. 0.422. There's your fourth solution. And let's pick this purpley color here and show that the arc length to that point, I'm going to draw it inside so you can see it. There we go, right there. So there are your four solutions, and we get that by using the quadratic program or quadratic formula. Um, now, let's talk about checking. We really haven't talked about this before. So to check these problems, one way to check them, of course you can plug them back in, you already know how to do that with algebra. One way to check them is to use your graphing calculator. So to, gra to use the graphing calculator as a check, notice here in y sub 1, I put the left-hand side of my equation, and in y sub 2, I put the right-hand side of my equation. Remember when you graph these in the calculator, your sine x squared, remember it has to be in total parentheses with your square at the end. Now my window, I set in the x direction from 0 to 2 pi because that's, that is the um, domain I'm concerned about. And then the range, I just played a little bit with it and just said it was negative 1 to 8. Um, and then if you look at the graph, you can see at the intersection right here, I hope you can see my pointer, and an intersection right here, and one right here, and one right here. And of course, you would find those with the intersect command. You already know how to do that. Um, so that's how you use, uh, that's how you can use your graphing calculator as a check for these problems.